Well, having said that, Madam Pr President, uh, we're now just a few hours away from a government shutdown unless, of course, enough senators can find a way to come together in order to avert it. Unfortunately, it appears that our Democrat, uh, Democratic colleagues would prefer a shutdown to compromise. The Democrats have activists and pundits cheering for that result. They have their members in line to vote against the alternative. They have set the stage to, uh, for a grand demonstration of their commitment. But for the life of me, Madam President, I can't see what they're committed to with the latest gesture to their political base. First of all, most of them don't object to the substance of the House passed continuing resolution. <clears throat> that bill would keep the government open and address a number of bipartisan health care priorities. I don't know any Democrats who are against uh, those, but uh, I'm sure there may be some. But the, but the rest of them, I think, are pretty much for it. The bill before us includes what would be the longest extension of the insurance program in history. CHIP has given children and their families access to quality health care. Now, maybe I have a right to speak on CHIP since I'm the author of the CHIP bill. And I believe in it. And I believe it's done so much good for our young people in this society. And I really resent it being played politics with all the time, which our friends on the other side just can't resist. CHIP has given children and their family, families access to quality health care and quality health care coverage for over two decades and was founded on the belief that the health of our future is too important to be dragged down by the political bickering of the present. Approximately 9 million children depend on this critical program. It's important to me. And after several months of uncertainty, those 9 million children deserve the peace of mind that comes with a long-term CHIP extension. As I noted here on the floor the other day as chairman of the Finance Committee, I've been working with my Democratic counterparts on a bipartisan CHIP extension bill for months now. The committee's ranking member, Senator Wyden, and I introduced our initial bill earlier last uh, fall. That bill would have reauthorized CHIP for five, five years. It was promptly reported out of the, the Finance Committee with near unanimous support. Then the Democrats decided to pretend that bill never existed. As we worked through a crowded legislative calendar at the end of last year, my colleagues were well aware that efforts to reauthorize CHIP were ongoing. Yet many of our colleagues accused Republicans of neglecting vulnerable children. I was leading the fight as one of the leading Republicans, as chairman of the Finance Committee, the author of the original bill, the one who's always voted for it. I just want a bill that works and not a political brouhaha that it always becomes whenever some of the Democrats think they can score some political points. The attacks on this front were fierce and usually at high volume. I was personally attacked uh, by colleagues in committee here on the floor and in the media. All kinds of vitriol was thrown in my direction, both here in the Senate and out, on the, and out in the political intelligentsia. No one need to worry about me, Madam President. I can take it and throw it right back if it's necessary. But for months, colleagues have been coming to the floor or going on TV, pretty much anywhere with a camera, to accuse Republicans of wanting to take away health insurance for vulnerable children. Total BS. But yet they do it all the time because they, with their friends in the media, know that they can get away with it. In spite of the wrong that they're doing. Throughout all of this time, they, they've conveniently neglected to mention that bipartisan efforts with regard to CHIP were moving forward, even though they clearly knew that such was the case. In fact, one of the harshest critics was an original co-sponsor of our bill and a senator who voted in support of our bill in committee. This new bill before us would reauthorize CHIP for six years. 
something that's never been done before. A six-year extension would be the largest and longest in the history of the program. We already had done that on the Finance Committee. In all other respects, the bill is identical to the one the Finance Committee reported with broad bipartisan support. So where are our colleagues today? Is Senator Wyden, who co-authored the committee's CHIP bill, prepared to vote for an even longer extension of the program? Apparently not. Are other Democrats on the Finance Committee, including those who publicly touted their support for the committee bill, prepared to vote for this extension? Apparently not. What about those Senate Democrats, both on and off the Finance Committee, who have been on their own righteous crusades with regard to CHIP? Are they prepared to vote for it today? Apparently not. What has changed? Do they oppose something in the broader bill? No. Most Democrats have supported the other health care elements in the package, including delays on the medical device tax, the health insurance tax, and the so-called Cadillac tax from Obamacare. The bill would accomplish those goals as well. Think about that. What about the Democrats? Have they championed those causes? Are they, prepared, are they prepared to vote in favor of this bill? Apparently not. The question is why? Why are Democrats willing to filibuster this continuing resolution and shut down the government? What crazy right-wing fantasy have we inserted into the bill? Of course, I'm being sarcastic. There's really nothing wrong with the substance of the bill, Madam President or at least very few of our Democratic colleagues are complaining about what's actually in the bill. Instead, they're complaining about what's not in it. The Democrats think they have struck political gold with immigration this week. So they're holding everything hostage so that they can stage another, quote, righteous, unquote, crusade here on the floor and in TV interviews. It should go without saying, that I personally would like to see a legislative fix for the so-called dreamers, undocumented immig immigrants brought to the U.S. as children. This is an important matter that needs to be addressed. And, although, and not only that there are myriad elements to our nation's immigration system that are in dire need of reform, immigration isn't something that can be solved with a few roundtables with the president and some quick regulations behind the scenes, or should I say negotiations behind the scenes. It certainly isn't something we can or should try to solve under the threat of an imminent government shutdown. Unless you've been hiding in a cave or trapped under something very heavy for the past 15 years, you know that immigration reform, even piecemeal reform, is an extremely difficult lift there are members of both parties willing to work on this. The president has indicated his willingness as well. But some don't want to go the reasonable route, so here we are. Madam President, I, I get that there's an adage in this town that no one should let a good crisis go to waste. And I certainly understand the desire to strike when a political iron is hot and in the eyes of most Democrats, that time is now. However, if they filibuster this legislation, they will be filibustering authorized funding for the child health insurance program. They will be voting to prevent this bipartisan effort, the one we've been talking about for years now, from moving forward. The one they've been harping about for years now from moving forward. There's another political adage that goes around this town, Madam President, one that horribly misquotes Napoleon. That axiom does something like this. Never interrupt your opponent when they're making a mistake. Truthfully, I don't consider my Democratic colleagues to be my, uh, my opponents. But a number of people unfortunately view Congress that way. Setting those semantics aside by urging my Democratic colleagues to vote in favor of this bill 
I may very well be ignoring Napoleon's advice. Still, my colleagues have to know that if they vote to block this legislation, they will unequivocally be voting against a historically long-term child health insurance program extension, the longest it's ever been. And I've had a lot to do with that. They will be voting to prolong the very crisis, that's their word, not mine, that they've been lamenting for the past several months. If they don't know that the CHIP advocates and, and stakeholders throughout the country know it, and the families and children who depend on CHIP will know it as well. Now, there's no reason for my colleagues to pit their righteous crusade on immigration against their righteous crusade for CHIP. This is simply a matter of priorities. Today, the priority should be to keep the government open and to ensure funding for CHIP well into the future. Like I said, Madam President, offering my colleagues the advice may amount to stepping on, in the way of an opponent's mistake, but the politics on these issues should stop. The right answers in this case, the right answer in this case, is pretty obvious. The right vote is one in favor of the House passed continuing resolution. I urge all of my colleagues to join me in voting for this bill.